If I had to take a guess, I'd say about 90% of apps use some sort of cloud file storage. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, they all have to store big files somewhere. And what you use for that is a cloud storage provider like AWS S3. Now, as a developer, the experience with those is pretty bad. And so what a fellow YouTuber Theo did is he implemented a service that makes it super simple as a developer to interact with a cloud storage provider, namely S3. To answer the question, if a software architected like this can actually solve the big problem of file uploads for developers, we have to take a look at how they're trying to alleviate the problem in the first place. So what I decided to do is read through their source code and reverse engineer what is not public and build my own service just like theirs from the ground up to really get a good understanding of how this works conceptually and also technically. So let me get you up to speed in case you've been living under a rock. Upload thing is a service made by Theo that lets you put your files into cloud storage very, very easily as a developer. Let me show you how easy it is in fact. I'm going to save the page.tsx um, there's a package you got to install for this to work and then when we navigate to localhost 3000 there's going to be a very simple file drop down here and when I drag a file over drop it here and click upload files we can see in the console there should be a link for this file. If I open this it's going to take me right to the file. A screenshot that a subscriber sent me of how he's following along with my real-time chat project. Very cool by the way felt very proud and it works beautifully. And the implementation is super straightforward. We can see the multi-uploader that is being provided to us by upload thing. It's just a file you copy and paste, honestly. And then you also do some API route work, but it's very simple. You define a route right here. This is very important that you define it under upload thing. And then also this um, request is being handled by a router you define in here where you can define the file types and the max size for each image that is being uploaded. And what I did to understand how great software is written is I did my own implementation of it. Let me show you my way of doing things. So um, in the route.ts, it's the exact same. Take a look at this, their implementation, my implementation, very, very simple because, you know, I copied from them and then their core.ts my core.ts very straightforward and um, i just spent 24 hours doing this like ab about a day so it has less features but it works very well nonetheless we can define a file size limit for each file save that and then let's take a look at my implementation i'm going to go to the page.tsx comment in my version and remove their version hit save restart my approach looks very similar and it does the same thing we can drop an image right here click upload files and then my implementation, I think, is a bit cooler because it also gives you the success message and you can see an on success callback um, from the client is being logged to the console. The way this looks in practice is if we go to the file input, you can see just like with React query syntax, there is um, the hook we get from my package that I just mocked out with the client. And then we get an on success and on error where the on success contains all the keys of the images that were successfully uploaded and their URL. And the fail keys contain the keys of the images that failed uploading. Very straightforward. Now, in my approach, we can also just copy this URL, which is kind of being clipped. We can copy this, paste it into the browser and the file is hosted right here. So it works just the same. And by copying their project, I really got a very, very good understanding of how things work and how this works conceptually. And it all starts on the front end where the files are uploaded into state. So what you can see right here, these files are just being kept in state right here until I click the upload files button. So for now, they're just being kept in state. And then whenever you click the upload button, these files are being sent to your server first. In code, this looks like this. They're being sent, and let's close out of all of these, they're being sent to this route.ts. But very important, not the actual files are sent, but just the file keys. They're being sent to this route right here, and then being handled by the post router that you define in your core.ts right here. This defines which file types you accept, and also what the max limit for each file is. This router is then handling this under the hood, it's being abstracted away from you. That's the whole purpose. But essentially you can enforce file limits, for example, in here. You do this server side because you cannot trust the client to do this. And then your server sends a request to my server or upload thing server. It's the same thing in this instance. And what my server does is generate an S3 policy. And what this S3 policy does is basically, it contains a signature from me that later allows the client 
to upload to my S3 bucket, but it enforces the limits you have set in your server. And we can take a look at what this looks like in practice very easily. Because when we uploaded the file, I logged out the fields right here for you. And we can de or yeah, it's called decode. We can decode them right here in JSON Web Token and take a look at the actual policy. So what is being generated on my server is this right here. This is what we're using for the file upload later on the client side. Very important, the client cannot change these. It's just like a JSON Web Token. If they tried to, these would be invalid and the upload to S3 with my credentials wouldn't work. And then here we are enforcing the content length range of how many bytes one file can maximum be. And this is what you configured in your route right here as these three megabytes. That's what this is and then it can also only start with an image slash. And this policy is then being sent back right here to the front end so we can directly handle the file upload from here. So we got the policy on the front end, it looks a bit ugly. And then with the files and the policy, we can start the upload right from the client. This is secure because this, remember, the policy is signed, so the client cannot change it. And then we handle the file upload directly to S3 bypassing these two servers for efficiency reasons. So the file is being stored directly to S3. And whenever that file upload is done, S3 sends a notification to Amazon's simple notification servers. It's just like a webhook that calls my server with the information of the file key. And then I can go ahead and see which API key uploaded that file and add to their quota. For example, the file size that is also being passed in this webhook. So all that is being handled right here on the edge on my server using Upstash as the database because that plays well with the edge. And that is conceptually how you architect a service like this. I found this super interesting. And the way I found out is because A, I had prior experience with S3 and then B, what you can do is you can dive into the actual package code. So for example, if we take a look at the upload thing slash react, we can take a look at their index.mjs and see how they do things. I'm not going to bore you with implementation details, but for example, you can recognize this file state right here, the reset files. This is what I'm doing in my file input as well. And by taking a look at their code and also their regular package, not specific for react with their client and server.mjs, you can get a really good feel of how they handle the uploads and such. For example, this is the S3 upload they're doing right here. We're making a post request with the form data. These are the S3 policies I talked about. This is the um, S3 upload. So that would be this step right here. And by reverse engineering their code and what's happening on their servers, you can tell a lot of how it works under the hood. And I just find it super interesting to really dissect on how great software is built and replicate it so you know how it's built as well. So do I think a software that is architected like this, like upload thing or my software fixes file uploads? I think it does because it abstracts so much stuff away from the user. So in the end, you just have to worry about defining an endpoint with a router that defines the file types you accept, for example, and the maximum size. And also you get a very convenient on success and on error. And that's all you need to worry about. Dealing with S3 yourself can be a lot of pain if you're not familiar with what pre-signed URLs are and so on. With a managed service like UploadThing or my copy of it, that is all being abstracted away from you and file uploads just become super straightforward. So I think, yes, it does solve a real world problem. And I just found it super interesting to learn how this is architected. Thanks very much for watching. That's all for today. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.